food bloggers. Hi, how are you today? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Eat Blog Talk podcast. This is the place for food bloggers to get information and inspiration to accelerate your blog's growth and ultimately help you to achieve your freedom, whether that's financial, personal, or professional. I'm Megan Porta. I have been a food blogger for 13 years, so I understand how isolating food blogging can be. I'm on a mission to motivate, inspire, and most importantly, let each and every food blogger, including you, know that you are heard and supported. Food bloggers, guess what? Facebook is not dead. I mean, I even succumbed to this belief for probably the past few years, but after my conversation with Carrie Barnard from Eating on a Dime, my perspective is totally changed. I believe that every single food blogger on the planet should listen to this episode because you will be re-inspired to get into your Facebook page and start growing that community that is going to get you super fans and more traffic and therefore more revenue and all the good stuff. Carrie talks about taking the pressure off and not being so focused on just getting the traffic and instead focusing on creating that community, asking people what they want and serving what they want, being flexible and open to changing up what you offer on Facebook, doing live video. She talks about so many great things in this episode. You are going to love it. That is my prediction. This is episode number 558, and it is sponsored by Rank IQ. Hello there, food blogger friends. I want to take a really quick break from this episode to chat about a few ways eBlog Talk can help you to feel connected as well as to get your hands on relevant, valuable information in 2024. It has been a bit of a tumultuous year so far. Do you agree? but you have come too far to stop now. This time is a minor blip in the journey, so buckle up and let's do this journey together and come out on the other side stronger than ever. eBlog Talk now has a Facebook group. Go join the eBlog Talk community Facebook group to get in on some great discussions. Once you're inside, you will gain access to a free job postings shared document, whether you're offering a service or looking for a service. There's also the new-ish accountability group that eBlog Talk offers. This group is a low investment membership for anyone looking to connect with peers and grow your business. This is for newer bloggers, intermediate bloggers, and experienced bloggers. We offer robust calls and Slack discussions and so much more in this group for the low cost of $34 a month. The eBlog Talk mini minds and mastermind groups are still being offered in 2024 and beyond. Mini Minds groups start up again in October, and we will start filling the 2025 Mastermind group in late summer of 24. Join the waitlist for one of these groups, and you will not be disappointed. And last but not least, join us at an in person retreat. If you are ready to learn, grow, and build relationships in person, join me and a handful of your fellow food bloggers at an upcoming eBlog Talk retreat. This is such a great opportunity to convene in an intimate setting so you can learn, collaborate, and connect. These retreats involve mastermind-style peer-to-peer collaborating, and they're incredibly powerful, delicious, so much good food, and fun. For all the offerings mentioned, head to eblogtalk.com and you will be directed in the appropriate way. We are more than just a podcast. Go explore some of these other offerings as your time and budget allows. Can't wait to see you in some of those other places. Now back to the episode. Carrie Barnard is a mother to eight amazing children. She has some biological children and has adopted through foster care as well. She is a huge advocate for helping others, which is how Eating on a Dime was born. With over 3 million fans on Facebook and recipe videos with over 100 million views, Eating on a Dime has become a trusted source for easy recipes for the entire family. Carrie, how is it going today? I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. Good. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. Yes, same. Thanks for being here. Before we get started, we're going to talk about Facebook today. Do you have a fun fact to share with us? Well, I mean, fun fact, I'm a mom of eight kids. And I actually grew my site when I was a single mom with eight kids. So fun fact. (laughs) So did you start your blog before you had kids? Uh, No. Mm -mm. Okay. 
Yeah, eight kids. That's a lot of kids. What are their age ranges? Okay, so the oldest is 23, and then the youngest is 13, going on 14. Oh, wow. Wow. I adopted a bunch of kids, so I kind of cheated. Okay. (laughs) You didn't cheat? That's amazing. (laughs) I love that. Yeah, people with a lot of kids, I feel like they're always on their toes. Like They know how to react really quickly, and they Uh can take on a lot and they're really efficient. So we already know that about you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So to kind of go along with that, so you grew your blog while you were growing a family. You've been a blogger for quite a while. So can you tell us just a little bit about your blog? Yeah, I run, um, my main website is eatingonadime.com. And basically we just focus on family-friendly recipes. Um, I've been doing this for over a decade I'm not even sure how long it's been so long. It's kind of all blurred together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After a decade, it gets, yeah, like, oh, where's the It's like, on? what's the point of even counting anymore? It's right. been a long time. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I've been kind of, I'm kind of a behind the scenes person. I haven't gone to, I've gone to some conferences, not a ton because I've been too busy with all these young kids, but now they're getting older. So I'm excited to be going to more conferences and stuff. Yes. Getting out there and connecting. Yeah. It's so mm-hmm. important at yeah. any stage of the game, honestly. Yeah, definitely. So you've been running this for a while. I'm sure you've got a team, correct? Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And I know that you're really into Facebook and you think there's potential there. Um, I was just telling you before we recorded that we just hosted Flavor Media and literally nobody wanted to talk about Facebook. They were all like, what's the point? Why would we, there's no potential. Why would we want to talk about this? So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think Facebook is still worth looking into. It's not what it used to be back in the video days and the viral yeah. days. You know, I was known as like the viral video queen because it seemed like everything I put up went viral. It's not that. But yeah. I feel like everything with blogging, you have to adjust. And, you know, why leave something on the table? You know, Facebook pays me. I We get money from Facebook every month for putting out content. So why would I not want that? That's just money, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so surely we don't get the traffic that we used to get from Facebook, but I mean, we still get traffic and that's where our, you know, our loyal fans are. So, I mean, Facebook is still, you know, the top social media platform. So it seems silly to, you know, not put out some energy into it, especially when it's really easy. You don't have to put a lot of thought into it. You know, we're not having to make fancy pins or do anything like that. So why not? That's kind of my motto. Okay. Well, that's that's good. That's comforting. And we, yeah, I appreciate that because that's not a common theme that I hear a lot. So this is really refreshing. So when you talk about like not having to put those pins together and think through that too much, what kind of content are you putting on Facebook? We're putting on whatever they want. So we're asking them what they want. So for example, my readers love unhealthy food (laughs) and it doesn't mean (laughs) because we're busy moms, it's called eating on a dime. So they want to save money. They love their slow cooker. And it doesn't mean that I can't post delicious, healthy recipes on my site. It just means my Facebook people, you know, they're not going to want to cook the really fancy salmon dish. They're going to want, you know, the crock pot chicken casserole. And so I just ask them regularly what they want. That way we can give them what they want because that's a community. Yeah. And then you're talking about your Facebook page, like your business page, right? When you Uh ask. Okay. Yeah. So you just regularly ask them, like, what do you want from me? And then you deliver that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we ask a question every single day. That's just in our, like, people want to be heard and they want you to pay attention to them. And so Facebook is one of those places you can. You can't do that on Pinterest, you know, but you can on Facebook and you can ask them questions and actually get responses of what they want. You know, like, what are you eating for Memorial Day? What are you having on Fourth of July? You know, when Thanksgiving comes, people want to tell you about their traditions and what they want. And then now you know what to, you know, what content to create and what content to give them. So really viewing it as a community and making them feel like they're a part of it. Like we're in this together. Tell me what you need. What do you want? And I will help you find that. Yeah, exactly. So we, we kind of create, we treat our business page more as a community instead of like a business, you know, less professional photos, even though we do do professional photos, but 
you know, we used to do the fancy photos with the ingredients and the title, you know, everybody was kind of doing that on Facebook. And now it's like, here's a picture. You want to make it? Let me show you how. Okay. So are you taking like your hero shot from your blog and putting it on your Facebook page or are you putting something different on there? No, we're still doing the hero shots. We're just not really doing specialized Facebook photos anymore, you know, like we did. And actually right now, the most popular things for us has been uploading multiple pictures, like a collage, Okay, but not, not like a collage, like we're having to go and do it. You're just uploading maybe three or four pictures from our site, Okay, whether it's ingredients and people like that, but you know, we're flexible, so it can change at any time and we're okay with that. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) So that style that was really popular for like, I feel like a long time, a couple of years with like the maybe little ingredients baked into the hero shot with like a, you know, cursive font saying the title and that's not necessarily working for your page anymore. Not really. No. Okay. We just didn't find that it was worth our time. All right. Yeah. And it does take a while to put those together. And I, it does take a while. And I feel like, you know, once everybody starts doing it, you don't really stand out anymore. So people are, it's not eye catching. People are getting used to it now. Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of just doing what you think that'll make you stand out. So right now our collages are standing out. And when I say collage, we're just uploading multiple photos, but when people are scrolling, it looks like a collage. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And then what about video? Are you putting video on your pages on yeah. your page? Yeah. Yeah. I believe that's the group that, you know, that where you can get paid is based on your video views. And so we still upload hands and pans videos. If we have them, YouTube videos that we've created, we upload them and we still do live videos occasionally. Okay. And how often are you doing the live videos? Maybe two to three a week, maybe. And what do you do with those? Well, we used to do them like almost every day because they were oh, so wow. popular. That's kind of what we were known for. But um, now they're just showing people recipes. Sometimes we go live and just introduce like a new freebie to get people to sign up for our newsletter. I'm actually thinking about starting like Coffee with Carrie to like build that more community mm-hmm. because if people like you and you're just hanging out with them, they're going to you know engage more. And if they're engaged more, they see your content more, which means then they go to your site more. And so that's really important. Okay. Reels on Facebook. Do you do those? Do you invest a lot of time there? We do do reels. So I've just started. Okay. So we're on Instagram and we do reels on Instagram and they've done well. And then just one day I uploaded them to Facebook and it went crazy. So now we, we do, you know, lots of reels. So I'm just repurposing content that we've already created for Instagram and we're just uploading them. Some of them are like us actually making it, but a lot of them is just like a cute little catchy video. Like it's not us actually preparing it. And then we're just telling them, Hey, say recipe or Hey, say tacos and we'll send you the recipe and then we're sending it to them. Okay. But that's done really well on Facebook. And do you do those separately? So you don't upload from Instagram and do like the auto upload to Facebook. You're separately creating those reels. Yeah. Okay. Now we still allow like, you know, on Instagram, it says like you can, like when you upload them, like for it to Mm -hmm. auto upload to Facebook, but it doesn't, it's just like sharing it to Facebook. So we actually upload it to our account and then we're actually allowing people to comment on them, but we're getting, you know, like our cowboy pasta salad recipe got 196,000 views on that reel and sent a lot of people, you know, traffic. And that's just one example. We have several over 200,000, one, 355,000 views. So I really think if people aren't doing reels, they're really missing out. Do they still have a program where they're paying for reels? I know they did for a while, right? Yeah, I don't think so. I think they might, and that's part of the videos, but it's minuscule for me. Right now, we're just doing it for reach and to drive traffic to our site because on all of our reels, we have a mini chat set up to where, like, for example, our crock pot chicken fajitas we set up and we have 355,000 people on there, but then that, that viewed it. But then when they comment, we send them the recipe link. So we're encouraging people to comment. Gotcha. Can you give us like the nitty gritty about Facebook Reels? Like how long should they be? Anything that we need to know about, I don't know, how to improve them, make them 
the best they can be? I mean, really, I wouldn't stress about it. You know, we have, we just quit stressing about it. We give ourselves two shots and that's it. So you can have your face in them or you cannot. You can also use like old hands and pans videos that you have and crop them into reels. I'm, I just use CapCut. It's really easy. And when I say I, like usually it's my teenager. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I love it. <laughs> it's good to get your teens involved, but you can yeah. just give them all your videos and they can create them into reels and they don't have to be you know, complicated. But I do think the number one thing you need to do is have a catchy line. Like, let me give you a couple of R's. This is the secret to stress-free dinners that will save money on groceries. And that was a link to our meal plan. Can you believe I made this dinner in 30 minutes? Those are like what I'm putting on the reels. You only need five ingredients. Right. The things that are just going to sell people right away. Like, oh yes, I need that. You know, like four ingredient cookies, you know, just yeah. things like that. And we've done, you know, we've tried everything. And so we've done just like, we've included the title, which is fine. And sometimes that does really well, but we're trying to be a little bit more catchy with like, for example, our crock pot hamburger helper did really well because we put homemade hamburger helper, but the crock pot does all the work mm-hmm. instead of just saying crock pot hamburger helper. Right. (laughs) It keeps people reading and it keeps people, oh, well, that is nice. I want that recipe, you know? Yeah. Intrigue. So yeah, if you, if you go to our page and you look at our reels, you're going to think, man, their quality is not that great because it's not, because that's not what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to give them what they want. And so like, if I'm cooking one of my recipes for dinner, I might just take a quick four or five second video of me like serving it. And then I'll put a catchy title on it. And there's a reel right there that you can use on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube shorts. And I was already eating the dinner anyway. Yeah. No, that's refreshing too. So it doesn't have to be like this highly curated video that you've edited and like, you know, whatever, finessed it totally. It can be something that you just put together as you're making dinner. Yeah. And those do really well. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, they do really well. I think people want to see, at least on Facebook, less professional and more like, oh, I can do that. If I look professional, they're like, oh, I can't do that. That's fun to watch. But if they see you actually doing it like in your sweats or, you know, just a regular kitchen, they're like, oh, I can do this too. That does seem to be the trend, doesn't it? Not just with Facebook, but with everything. And I love it. It's like such permission to just let your guard down a little bit and not be so perfect and just right. produce what people want. And that's being you. Well, and just throw it out there. What's the yeah. heart? You know, if it flops, it flops. Keep yeah. moving on. And so that's kind of our motto. We're just going to do it and see what happens. But I think that's the important thing is being flexible, changing often, you know. Right. Do you do voiceovers on your reels? Do you notice if that works or do you do music or what do you typically do? Typically we do music. Sometimes we do voiceovers and I haven't really noticed a difference okay. on whether or not they get more. We haven't, that hasn't stuck out, but we've been testing both out. And okay. so, but normally like a voiceover is, yeah, I would do a voiceover if I was doing like a hands and pans video and editing it, then I would just, you know, speak it really quickly over words. So people do like that because my face isn't in it. Yeah. <laughs> but if my face is in it, then I'm just usually a video and I'm not even talking. I'm just smiling. <laughs> you don't you even know? have to say so, anything. <laughs> yeah. It's very easy. That's funny. So I'm looking at your page now and I love what you do with your photo collages, how you uh-huh. just like, you don't even put the link there. You're just like, if you want this comment and then mm-hmm. you provide the link in the comments and that really increases engagement, I assume. Right. right? Yeah, definitely. Well, and so we have it set up. So like if they, they type, if they say lemonade in the comments, then we have it set up for Manny Chat to activate gotcha. when they say. Yeah. So then we will respond with the link automatically, but also message them the link. Yeah. But not also, we're also not just messaging the link. We're also messaging them a freebie to try to get them on our emails. But yeah, we get a lot of comments, but I feel like the more comments, the, four, the more likes and the more they see, and then it's slowly growing yeah. and gaining more traction. Now you have a bunch of followers on on Facebook, like 3.5 million. That's a lot. But you recommend even for someone who's maybe a newer blogger or intermediate who doesn't have that following, do yeah. you still think that there's potential? Like if someone has a thousand followers on on Facebook, they should still invest time in this? 
Oh, definitely. Because just because I have 3.5 million followers doesn't mean I'm getting tons of traffic from Facebook. Yeah. Like, because that was, you know, back in the viral days. Now, we just focus now, instead of growing, focus on serving the people that you do have. So if you only have a thousand people, be the best for that thousand people. And then you'll start seeing it grow. Mm. You know, if you're just, they'll share it naturally if you're giving them what they want. Hello, food bloggers. Are you looking to spice up your social media account with unique and exciting content? If you want that secret edge that makes you stand out in your niche, I might have the answer for you. Katarina can help you streamline your podcasting and social media content with audio editing, video editing, or social media strategies. She specializes in working with food bloggers, tailoring her content creation packages to their needs. Whether you want to create something new like a gripping podcast, or if you want to refresh your social media strategies by creating scroll-stopping video content for platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, she has got you covered. If this sounds intriguing, get in touch with Katarina. Go to eblogtalk.com forward slash resources to get more information about Katarina's services. Again, go to eblogtalk.com forward slash resources and click on her link. Now let's get back to the episode. So just focus on, hey, I'm so glad I have these thousand people following me. What do you guys want? And give it to them. And then they're going to love it and they're going to want to share you. Hmm, that's really good advice. Okay, so you talked about traffic a little bit. So Mm -hmm. you don't see a ton of traffic. You're probably comparing to to the old days, like when you had all of those hands and pants. Those were crazy, weren't they? Those viral videos that just like good old days. I know, (laughs) I know. But do you see significant traffic from Facebook? Would you say? Yeah, I would. It's not our, you know, top like it used to be. But we've definitely since we quit trying so hard, our traffic has gone up. So we're just, you know, focusing on building that community more and less on trying to grow it. And then we're getting more traffic because people want it. You know, now that we're telling people to comment, like we have people who comment on posts to try to get the recipe when it's not even offered. Yeah. <laughs> like when we're just That's asking funny. a question because we're training them yeah. to want the recipe. And if you don't want the recipe, guess what? You don't have to ask for it. So it's definitely, we've definitely seen a boost in traffic since Like we've stopped trying so hard to be like this professional and just be, hey, look at this awesome recipe I have. Do you want it? Mm. Here's how you can get it. So you really are focused on, I mean, we've said it a few times, but that community and just like we are here to serve you. And when you do that, you take off the pressure a little bit or a lot right? and open up room for success, honestly, right? Yeah. Well, and where else can you do that? Yeah. You, You can't really do that anywhere else. That you can, I mean, you can post on Instagram, but it's not the same. Facebook is just like where people are at, where they want to hang out, where your readers are. So why not try a way to get into their feeds again? And we have people message us and it's like, you're not in my feeds. And I'm like, go and comment on a bunch of stuff and like it. And then we'll come back in your feeds. But yeah, I think that just that community, because you have to have a reason for them to keep coming back. And just you saying, hey, I want you to come to my site. It just isn't enough. There's got to be more. And so that's why I think like live videos, even if it's just, hey, guys, I'm drinking coffee. It's been a rough week. You know, we're super busy. How's your life going? Even if it's just for a few minutes, once a week, like you're going to slowly start seeing results from that because you're building community. And why wouldn't they want to support you? Because you're there for them. Mm, I love that. You seem to post a lot. So would you say like just, I don't know, do you have a certain number or just kind of feel it out as far as how many posts to put up per day? Well, you know, what's crazy is we used to post like 24 times a day. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. And now we're posting less than half that and seeing an increase. So I think it's more about less is more. Okay. And having a variety. Don't just, if you, if you scroll through our page, you'll see that there's a variety, you know, we're asking questions, we're having pictures, we have videos, So I think people, it's just having that variety and it's less about posting all the time, like back in the olden days when you Mm -hmm. wanted to get those videos out as much as possible. Yeah. Do you have a group or do you do like anything with other groups? We do have several groups and when we post, we'll usually share them to them and they do pretty good. I wouldn't say they're amazing, but they're great because it's another way to build community. And then do you do, like, how much do you focus on those versus your page? 
I don't really focus on the groups as much. I just kind of pop in there and interact, but that's about it. So, okay. So you would recommend more focusing on business pages if, because it's a lot of time. It's a huge time investment to do a page and all of the stuff we're talking about. And then also like manage a group. So would you recommend one over the other? Yeah, I would stick with your page over okay. your group. Now, if you have time, go ahead and create a group, but we focus on our page first. The group is great and people tick chit chat and share recipes, but we just like our page more. Yeah. Do you do any cross promoting? I know that used to be a big thing too, just like sharing other people's Mm -hmm. videos and viral content. Do you do that anymore? No. Okay. So it's just your content. Okay. Now we'll share other people's content occasionally, not as much as we used to, because I just, it didn't really, it wasn't working for other people. Like we were trying to help out, but I think we share one or two other people's a day. Okay. But if I'm like scrolling on my phone and I see something that I really like from another food blogger that I love, I'll just click share on my phone and it's not like it's organic. Like, oh my gosh, I want this right now. And more, you know, just more casual. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have another question about live videos because I know this can be such a huge hang up for people. They just don't Mm want to get in front of video. Can you speak to that and just give people encouragement just to do it? Yeah, why not? I love doing live videos. My sister works with me as well. And that's our favorite thing to do is live videos. You just can't, if you're not doing a live video, then you're not a real person to them. And so if you're not on there with with AI right now, like that's the best way for you to show them that you're a real person is by being real and showing up in your PJs if you need to, or talking at the end of the day, or just talking about the newest recipes this week. Like even if you don't even have to prep a dinner, but if you just sit on a video and say, Hey guys, here's our new recipes. This is why I like them. Thanks so much. You know, and that's it. You'll be impressed. People, people like that. They still want that, you know, live engagement. I will say when we do live videos, we try to shout out people as much as possible that does better. So let's say we're on a live and you hop on there. I'd be like, Hey, Megan, I'm so glad you're here. Even if I don't know who Megan is. Yeah. People love that. <laughs> they people love hearing love their that. names. Yeah. Anytime it pops up. And so you're just getting that, you know, that proof that you're a real person and proof that you care about them. So do the live videos yeah. and we repurpose our live videos into reels. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Like if you're, let's say you're going to make a dinner like maybe a rice recipe and you did that on a reel, then you can just crop it and we zoom it up really quickly and then just add a cute caption, mute it, put music on it and then add a cute caption. Like you're going to love this rice recipe and boom, you have a reel that you can now put on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube shorts. Mm, that's super smart. Yeah. So, you know, there's a way to repurpose all your content that you do into something else. And so why not? Or even if you were just doing like a coffee chat, you could per- repurpose that into a reel and be, you know, do you love our coffee chats or what's your favorite kind of coffee just to get engagement, things like that. I also love, I'm just scrolling down your page. I love that you ask about your dryer, like just not maybe food related all the time, but hey, my dryer died. Can you give me your yes. recommendations? Because that's when people are like, oh, well, I Love my dryer. Let me tell you about it. I mean, did you see how many comments I got? I know. So many. Yes. So many. Hundreds. Yeah. But well, yeah, like my teenagers, when they went to prom, I posted their prom picture on there and people were commenting there with their prom pictures and they loved it. I was like, give me your, you know, but it's showing that I'm a real person. You know, I have a dryer and it broke and I'm really mad right. because I only had it for a few years, <laughs> you know, and they are like, tell me what I actually need to do because this is not working, you know? And yeah. so, you know, people have opinions and they want to share them. So yeah. why not? So yeah, I've tried to be more like organic. Like we still have our schedule, but I'll just randomly yeah. post in there. Like if I'm going to post on my personal page on your phone, you can now put, Hey, do you want to share this to your page too? And I just decided one day, yeah, I'm going to. And then the engagement was great. So that I just yeah. kept doing it. Yep. And I don't do it all the time, but, you know, just a little in there of, you know, hey, help me out. And they'll help each other out. So it's great. And you have to be willing to kind of roll with the punches too. Like what you were saying earlier with the hero image, with the ingredients, like that, you know, curating that takes time. And then seeing that the trend changes and right. being willing to adapt a little bit, that has to be part of your process as well, right? 
Yeah, definitely. It's just flexibility. Yeah. You know, okay, our Facebook is tanking. What should we do now? Okay, let's do this and then try something different. And then now it's growing. But I think the main takeaway that anybody should learn is that, you know, treat it as a community. Treat them as like they're people you're inviting over to your house. And I think they'll do better and less as like, you know, a professional and just, hey, it doesn't mean you're not an expert. You're still an expert in your field. It's just being welcoming. How would you welcome people into your home? That's how you want to welcome them into your page. Ooh, that's a good perspective. And you mentioned AI earlier too. I think that's a huge thing right now that people are trying to combat. So think of how you can be more human because people are kind of fighting against that AI. Like, I don't want my life to be run by robots. I want humans. Right. And this is a great opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. And how do you know, how do they know that you're real if you don't show your face? Yeah. Right. Right. If it's just a bunch of images, you could be a robot. <laughs> exactly. And right now, you know, I'm sure people are fine with it, but eventually they're going to get tired of the AI photos and the fake recipes that aren't working. And so they're going to be looking for the people who actually are helping them. And that's, to me, that's going to be the people who are on video, the people who are showing them. And I think that will speak volumes to them eventually. And so that's kind of what we're focusing on. Let's just build a community, show them that we're real people with real recipes. You know, our whole motto is real food for real families. But yeah, so that's what we're going to show them. Oh, and it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean it has to be difficult. Yeah, I'm just watching some of your videos. You're so welcoming. You have just a friendly, welcoming vibe. And thank you. (laughs) You'll see. I normally I get a lot of like hate comments because I don't pull my hair back. I don't know. Oh, my what? sister, I know. And we're like, this is our kitchen. Like, welcome to our home. We're not going to pull our hair back. You know, oh, that's you, funny. Might, you might get a hair in your food. Congratulations. <laughs> you're the winner. <laughs> welcome to our home. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of how we are. Like, my dogs walk around in the videos. They I love it. their tails. And we're always drinking coffee because life is better with coffee. Yes. And agree. so, you know, that's kind of how we are. It's like, here's our kitchen. It's not professional. We're just doing the best we can and we just have really amazing food that we want to share with you. And that's kind of, that's kind of how our take has been on. And now we're just really focused that like tune in on that with, you know, the actual Facebook page. Carrie, this is so inspiring. I've kind of felt like, oh, Facebook for so many years, but your page has just re-inspired me. Thank you so much for all of this. Seriously, I think this is going to be a really inspiring episode for a lot of people. We have... Well, I hope so. It's yeah. It's so fun. We have not had a positive Facebook episode in many years, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Well, I think wild. that's why I want to talk about it. Like, you know, yeah. just... It's not going to be the same as it was, but, you know, nothing's the same as it was when I started blogging 10 years ago. Yeah, So nothing. everything is Literally different. Nothing. Yep. And I feel like that's how... I think a lot of food bloggers forget that that's how all businesses are. They have to adapt. You know, 20 years ago, we didn't have Apple Pay and businesses Mm -hmm. had, you know, just like your regular grocery store had to figure out how to take Apple Pay, you know, so they're having to evolve too. And so we have to evolve, you know, as everything evolves. Yeah. And so it's just, yeah, I think it's just fun. Don't, don't miss out on Facebook. You're missing out on fun. Aw. Is there anything we've forgotten that you feel like would be really important for people to hear about Facebook before we start saying goodbye? I don't think so. I think we got everything. I do highly recommend people doing mini chat or some other kind of, we didn't really talk about that much, yeah. but people don't really see links on Facebook anymore. They're kind of hidden. And so when you do a mini chat or another autoresponder, if people don't know what that is, but basically what it does is you say, you, you activate to where if they say, let's say pasta, then we will send them the recipe of that pasta recipe. We will reply in the comments, but we will also, it also automatically sends them a message. And what's great there is once they're in your messenger, you can invite them for a freebie to get on your email list. You can also invite them to sign up for broadcast. So like I send out my people who signed up for my broadcast once a day, our new recipes and people love it. And so I Again, that's more building community because when you comment, we're replying to you and we're sending you a message that's, you know, it's not a professional message. It's like, hey, friend, guess what? Here it is. Enjoy it. I love it so much. And people really like that. So I definitely think that to maximize Facebook, you need to get on like a mini chat or I know there's a few other ones. That's just the one I happen to use. Yeah. 
that seems like a popular one that people are using now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie. It was such a pleasure, so much fun talking to you. And I know this is going to inspire so many people. So we just really appreciate you. Do you have either a favorite quote or words of inspiration to leave us with? I like to ask that of all my guests. If you do, we'd love to hear Okay. It. So I wasn't sure what to do because <laughs> I was like, uh, so I asked my teenage boys. So I have a ton of teenage boys who are very hard workers and oh. their favorite quote is no one cares work harder. And so it's, and I was like, Oh, I love that quote. I oh. forgot how much I love that cares because it doesn't matter what other people are doing. You just got to work harder. And so that's kind of been my motto in life. It doesn't matter what happens to you in your life. You just got to work hard and you can beat other people by working harder. You know, a lot of people just like in the Facebook, a lot of people are quitting using Facebook, yeah. but well, that's a perfect time to do Facebook then because you don't have as many competition. Uh -huh. And so you kind of, you know, if SEO, you're struggling with, you know, SEO, work harder, do something different. And so that's kind of been our whole life motto oh, is, you know, like I said at the beginning, you know, I grew my site from little to nothing, you know, as I, you know, unexpectedly became a single mom to eight kids and I still was able, you know, I just worked harder. So I think that's just a good motto in life. Hmm. stop comparing yourself to other people. Just compare yourself to yourself and work hard. Yes. I hear that so much, not with Facebook, but with just like blogging in general, people are like, is this worth it? I'm going to leave. I'm like, you know what? Exactly what you just said. Like you just have to keep going and keep working and you're going to beat out everyone else by doing that. So yes. keep at it. I mean, yeah, I have a full-time job where I'm providing income for other families yeah. and I work at home. You know, I'm wearing PJ pants right now. So uh, I know it really is the best life, isn't it? I love it so much. It is. So yeah. Oh, thank you. That was amazing. We'll put together a show notes page for you, Carrie. If anyone wants to go look at those, head to eblogtalk.com forward slash eating on a dime. So tell everyone where they can find you, your blog, social handles, anything else you want to mention. Yeah, you can find us on Facebook. You know, it's eatingonadime.com, but all our social handles are eating on a dime, whether it's Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, we're on all of them and we'd love to connect. We also have a lazy day cooking club. And that is basically a meal prep service where we teach people how to prep dinners, like 10 dinners in an hour, and then just throw them in their crock pot. And we actually have a great affiliate program. So a lot of food bloggers have been using it. It's great in their emails. It's great on social media. So that's another option as well. They can just go to lazydaycookingclub.com to learn about how to become an affiliate, or they can just hit the contact button on there and we'll get them set up. Awesome. Everyone go check all of that out. Thank you again, Carrie, so much for being here. And thank you for listening, food bloggers. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Eat Blog Talk. If you are craving accountability, focus, and connection at a low monthly cost, join the Eat Blog Talk accountability group at eatblogtalk.com forward slash focus. I will see you next time.